Barack Obama, the man who once held the highest office in the land, has lived a life that exceeds the expectations set for a former president. Beyond the grandeur of the White House and beyond the diplomatic and political realms, Obama's journey into the realm of trillionaire status is nothing short of fascinating. Join me as we delve into the intricacies of his financial empire, exploring the secrets behind his success and the ventures that have propelled him into a world of unimaginable wealth. Welcome, luxury enthusiasts, to Luxury Beyond Borders, your passport to opulence and extravagance. In each episode, we embark on a captivating journey across the globe, unveiling the most extraordinary stories of luxury that transcend borders. From breathtaking estates to rare artifacts, join us as we explore the world of indulgence like never before. Contrary to popular belief, Barack Obama's journey towards financial prosperity did not begin with his presidential tenure. Rewind to the early 2000s, specifically 2004, well before the historic presidency. At that time, Obama was earning a modest salary of $8,287 as a member of the Illinois Senate. Not content with just political pursuit, he was also an educator, sharing his insights with budding legal minds at the University of Chicago Law School, adding $32,400 to his income. But that was just the beginning. Obama, ever the saver investor, diversified his financial portfolio with holdings in three distinct assets, including the Vanguard Wellington Fund, valued between $100,000 and $200,000. His foray into the literary world in 2005 marked a pivotal moment in his financial journey. Securing a monumental deal with Random House, he received a staggering $1.9 million advance for his book, The Odyssey of Hope, a bestseller that lingered on the New York Times list for an impressive 30 weeks. The financial windfall didn't stop there. In the same year, he earned over $847,000 from another book advanced for his earlier work, Dreams from My Father. This memoir provided an intimate glimpse into his personal history, earning him not only an initial advance but also ongoing royalties. By 2005, additional book royalties amounted to $378,000 and the numbers kept climbing. The Audacity of Hope alone amassed $425,000 in royalties by 2007. Bama's financial acumen extended beyond books. In 2005, he acquired U.S. Treasury notes, considered low-risk and stable investments, valued between $500,000 and $1 million. Anticipating the future, he also invested into $529 college savings plans for his daughters, each valued between $50,000 and $100,000. As forward to 2008, the year Obama assumed the presidency and his net worth ranged between $1.1 million and $5.1 million in U.S. Treasury bills. The Nobel Peace Prize in the same year added a $1.4 million award to his financial arsenal, all of which he donated to various charities. Obama made $400,000 per year while in office from 2009 to 2015 with the help of book royalties and investment interest. Post-Oval office, he continued to earn a comfortable $200,000 annually in pensions. However, recognizing that pensions alone wouldn't suffice, he strategically ventured into new territories. Now, let's take a moment to explore the early life and education that shaped the man who would later become the 44th President of the United States. Born on August 4, 1961 at Kapilani Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, Barack Obama was the son of Kenyan father Barack Obama Sr. and an American mother 
and Donham. Obama Sr. hails from a small village in Yanze province, Kenya, and won a scholarship to study economics at University of Hawaii. It was there that he met Anne in Russian language class, and the two married in Wuku, Hawaii, six months before Barack Obama was born. However, the couple's path diverged in 1964, with Obama Sr. returning to Kenya, where he later held a position as a senior economic analyst. His mother's union with Indonesian graduate student Lulu Sitaro left a lasting impression in his early years. The family resided in South Jakarta before moving to a more affluent area in central Jakarta. At age 6, Obama returned to Hawaii to live with his maternal grandparents, attending the prestigious Panoho School. These formative years allowed him to become fluent in Indonesian and provided insights into diverse cultures. If you're someone who appreciates the finer things in life, you're in the right place. Luxury Beyond Borders is not just a channel, it's an elite circle of individuals who share a passion for the extraordinary. Don't miss out on our exclusive journeys into the opulence. Hit that subscribe button and be part of the community that knows Luxury Beyond Borders. Transitioning to his political career and presidency, Obama's journey took him through various political offices, reflecting his dedication to public service. Before becoming the first African-American president, he served as a community organizer in Chicago, worked as a lecturer at the University of Chicago Law School, and held the position of editor and president of the Harvard Law Review during his time at Harvard Law School. A significant turning point in Obama's life occurred in 1988 when he embarked on a transformative journey to Europe and Kenya. Connecting with his paternal relatives in Kenya provided valuable insights that would shape his future path in life and politics. Despite receiving a full scholarship to Northwestern University School of Law, Obama chose to enroll at Harvard Law School, graduating with honors in 1991. In the mid-1980s, Barack Obama made a pivotal move to Chicago. Political journey kicked into high gear. Picture this, a young Obama, not yet a household name, passionately immersing himself in community organizing. It wasn't all glamour and fame. He was knee-deep in issues like tutoring programs, job training, and tenants' rights in struggling neighborhoods. This experience set the stage for his unwavering commitment to public service and community empowerment. Obama's impact was felt through Project Vote, an Illinois voter registration initiative that he oversaw in 1992. This initiative employed 700 volunteer registrars and 10 staff members, successfully registering 150,000 previously unregistered African Americans in the state. His achievements earned him a spot on Crane's Chicago Business 1993 list of 40 under 40 influential people. In 1996, Obama made his debut in state politics, getting elected to the Illinois State Senate. His eight years in this role laid the foundation for his aspirations at a national level. Fast forward to 2004, and Obama achieved a historic victory by being elected to the United States Senate. But he didn't stop there. His keynote address at the Democratic National Convention that same year showcased his charisma and oratory skills, propelling him into the national spotlight. The next logical step for Obama? A run for the presidency. In 2007, he officially announced his candidacy, eventually securing the Democratic nomination in 2008. November of the year marked a significant moment in his history as Barack Obama became the first African-American president of the United States. The nation celebrated his inauguration in January 2009, eager to witness a change he promised. President Obama faced monumental challenges, 
including the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. His administration implemented measures like the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act to stimulate the economy and create jobs. Obama's commitment to health care reform resulted in the passage of the Affordable Care Act, a landmark achievement with both supporters and critics. Leaving office in 2017, Barack and Michelle Obama continued their work in various areas, maintaining high approval ratings. Beyond politics, the Obamas venture into the world of real estate, acquiring luxurious homes in Washington, Martha's Vineyard and beyond. Their Washington mansion, purchased for $8.1 million, boasts nine bedrooms, eight and a half bathrooms, and a rich history. The Obamas also invested in a Martha's Vineyard escape, complete with seven bedrooms, stone fireplaces, and a private beach. But it's not all about real estate. The Obamas know how to vacation in style. From historical tours in Greece to exploring Indonesian attractions, their adventures reflect a post-presidential life filled with relaxation and cultural exploration. See if their lifestyle wasn't fascinating enough, Let's dive into the world of presidential gift. From a $334,000 gift from the King of Saudi Arabia to fine silk embroidery from the President of China valued at $20,000. These gifts showcase the global recognition and respect for Barack Obama's presidency. In conclusion, Barack Obama's journey from community organizer to the first African-American president is a tale of perseverance, dedication, and historic achievement. His post-presidential life continues to captivate. From luxurious homes to globe-truding adventures, the story of Barack Obama isn't just about politics. It's about a man who reshaped the narrative of what is possible in America. As we draw the velvet curtain and another chapter of opulence, we want to thank you for joining us on this refined escapade. If you're someone who believes in curating a lifestyle that echoes luxury, then Luxury Beyond Borders is your sanctuary. Make sure to subscribe, share, and immerse yourself in a story that redefines extravagance. Until our next encounter, remember to curate your lifestyle with a touch of luxury. Stay sophisticated, stay inspired, and we can't wait to welcome you back for more tales from around the globe.